Dr. Hashir Arj's most recent research is a result of multinational collaborations to identify factors relating to tinnitus and psychological conditions. With research published in the American Journal of the American Academy of Audiology 2018 and the American Journal of Audiology, among others, Hashir and his colleagues covered three topics, adverse childhood experiences, depression and tinnitus, and hearing loss and tinnitus. In collaboration with Professor Richard Salvi from University at Buffalo, Center for Hearing and Deafness Research, we studied the relationship between hearing loss and tinnitus loudness in over 400 patients. It is common knowledge that as we get older, or because of the loud environmental noises, our hearing deteriorates over time. Age-related hearing loss is a very slow process and it is estimated to be about 5 decibel per decade. However, in individuals with tinnitus, it is a common concern that if their hearing worsens for any reasons, it may lead to an increase in the loudness of their tinnitus to a level that they would not be able to cope with. The more people get anxious about their tinnitus, it is more likely for it to remain in the focus of their attention and for them to notice it more. People may also engage in safety-seeking behaviours in a form of avoidance of day-to-day -day environmental noises in a fear that it may cause a hearing loss or worsening of their tinnitus. This can lead to emergence of hyperacusis. Our results showed that severity of hearing loss was indeed related to the loudness of their tinnitus. So in some ways, the fear expressed by some patients was real. However, the relationship between tinnitus loudness and severity of hearing loss was extremely weak. In their study, Hashir and Richard also assessed the relationship between tinnitus annoyance and the loudness of tinnitus, which was shown to be a very strong relationship. In fact, the relationship between annoyance and tinnitus loudness was 20 times stronger than hearing loss and tinnitus loudness. Other studies shown that when tinnitus-related distress and anxiety is minimized, tinnitus loses its significance and it is more likely for it to fade away to the background. Our study showed that the amount that people get annoyed by their tinnitus is the key contributing factor to the perceived loudness of the tinnitus and therapy can help with that. Therapy can help them to explore the mechanism in which tinnitus produces annoyance and help them to modify that. The results shown from Hashir's patients demonstrate that cognitive behavioural therapy is effective not just for tinnitus, but for other conditions like misophonia and hyperacusis. Uh, I had hyperacusis and I was, you know, a musician, I still am a musician, and um, so obviously I had to stop doing music, um, cut back on doing musical projects, couldn't go to gigs. When I first got it, I went to a festival and it's quite loud. I came home and I remember getting some like ringing in my ears and then trying to listen to music and it would just, I don't know, it just hurt quite a lot. It just felt very, like the high end was just sort of really harsh in my ears and then sort of having conversations as well. Um, certain phrases were just like, like certain words, like, like when someone laughed, really hurt my ears for some reason. It was like a really sharp pain. The treatment was really good actually because it, um, cause I found out that a lot of it was to do with um, sort of anxiety and stress and stuff and going through and sort of reducing my anxiety level, uh, levels through treatment was very beneficial because um, I found that the more I worried about sounds the worse, the, sort of the louder that the brain sort of made you think they were. Um, so yeah, the treatment just helped me sort of reduce that. We have developed a mathematical model with the use of clinical data for over 600 patients with tinnitus and hyperacusis and the model describes how tinnitus loudness can lead to depression. There are two aspects to this. One is, is whether tinnitus leads to a greater incidence of depression, uh, but also whether depression itself m makes people more affected by the tinnitus that they have. Um, and, and we've been studying this, this issue in, in great detail. And Hashir fortunately has records of very large numbers of patients who've filled in questionnaires of various kinds so that we can use uh, the results to relate the, the tinnitus uh, to uh, factors like, like depression uh, and insomnia and so on so that, so that we can try and 
get some idea of what is, is causing what. The interesting point is that the actual loudness of the tinnitus does not directly link with severity of depression. Although there is a significant relationship between tinnitus loudness and depression, but this relationship is fully mediated via the effect of tinnitus on the person's life, via the, the way that tinnitus interrupts their sleep, as well as the anxiety that it produces, as well as hyperacusis symptoms. One important aspect of the results is to uh, decide when a patient should be referred for further psychological treatment because it, it could well be that in some cases treating a, a person for depression can have a side effect of making them less distressed by their tinnitus. The clinical implication for audiologists as well as mental health professionals is that in patients who experience tinnitus, depressive symptoms can be alleviated if tinnitus related distress and the impact that tinnitus has on the life of the patients, the, the sleep disturbances that it caused are minimized even if the tinnitus loudness remains unchanged. I really find research evidence supporting efficacy of sound therapy. So we learned that in some people, tinnitus may lead to depression, but not everyone who has tinnitus may develop depression. So what are the risk factors? Could the individual's past adverse life events make them more vulnerable to develop depression, should they experience tinnitus? Adverse childhood experiences comprise different types of physical, emotional and sexual abuse, as well as family dysfunctions like parental separation and drug and alcohol abuse in the family. My focus is on poor parental mental health in childhood and, and the reason is over 40% of the patients seen in my tinnitus and hyperacusis clinics reported this. Imagine if parents suffer from anxiety, depression and anger, it impacts on the way that they interact with their children. Our results showed that severity of the impact of tinnitus, hyperacusis and misophonia on persons' life was significantly more in the group of patients who in their childhood their parents were suffering from anxiety, depression or other psychological disturbances. This relationship was much more pronounced in people with hyperacusis and misophonia. So, what Dr. Hashir and his colleagues learned was twofold. Investigating and addressing childhood traumas may be needed in patients with severe tinnitus, hyperacusis and misophonia as a component of their treatment. Second, if you are a parent and you suffer from a depressed mood, anger and anxiety, the sooner you seek help from mental health professionals, the better, as it will improve your own quality of life as well as your children's psychological strength in dealing with stress later in life. In his tinnitus masterclass, Hashir shares his clinical methods and research with an international group of doctors and audiologists from many countries in America, Europe, Western Asia and Australia. I've been working with tinnitus patients for a couple of years and uh, they are very tricky patients and uh, since the beginning I was dealing with them I thought that I need to, to more knowledge and more uh, skills to how to deal with them. So I discovered Hashi uh, on his website and uh, I thought why not, why not, let's see what uh, I, could, I could get from him and I can. I was really fascinated by the, uh, the CBT, like Cognitive Behavior Therapy. I think this is a really great opportunity to learn from the well-known like, professor in the world in this field. Well, I'm an audiologist. I've been working in the audiology field since 2005. When I've read the, um, the course about uh, tinnitus therapy and hyperacusis, I really have to change the way of uh, thinking about tinnitus out, the way of treating the tinnitus in Lebanon. How can I help these people who are suffering from tinnitus? I never did a formal course to be able to um, <laughs> enhance my skills. So my main reason for being here is to be able to enhance the skills that I already learned very early on my, in my career and hopefully provide a more personalized care solution for my patients. To learn more, follow Dr. Hashi Arj on Twitter, LinkedIn and his clinic website.